Great day. Hi, you can see me. <laughs> I promise. I am here. I um, I actually can't see my camera. So I, I have the camera turned away. So in the chat, let me know if you can see me. I forgot my microphone at home. As you can see, I'm not in my normal place. I am actually house sitting. And um, so that's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to bring the featherweight out is because I knew I wasn't going to be in my normal spot. So I am using my friend's YouTube setup because uh, he also does YouTube videos. And so I figured why not use his setup and go live. So uh, yes, can see and hear you. Perfect. Thank you so much. I do have my comments over here. Uh, so as you're talking in the chat, I can see the chat messages and everything. I totally can. It feels weird not being able to see myself because normally I have one way somewhere to see myself and unfortunately tonight I'm not going to have that. But just let me know if something looks a little off or sounds a little off. Know that first of all I can't do a whole lot of it because I'm literally recording and going live on my phone and that's pretty much all I can do. You look fabulous and sound great. Thank you Donna. I appreciate it. We got Donna here. We got Sobeka here. We got Gigi Quilts here. We got Renee here. Uh, we got So Terry here. So many people here. Thank you guys so much for joining me. It feels weird to not have like my intro and do all the things, but we're going we're going with this. Happy Halloween! I should have said that. Happy Halloween! Hope you're having a great Halloween. And uh, if you are catching this on the replay, I hope you had a great Halloween. And hopefully you're out trick or treating, either yourself or your little ones. I hope y'all are all out enjoying the evening. So. Video is perfect, audio is good, lighting is amazing. Let's get sewing. Let's get sewing. First of all, I do want to have a quick little notice. You'll notice I got my I Voted sticker. I highly encourage every single one of you. Early voting is going on right now. Please get out and vote. If you don't make it for early voting, make sure to get out on November 8th, Tuesday, November 8th. I think that date is right. Get out and vote, vote, vote. That is very important to everyone, so make sure that your voice is heard. Get out there and vote. All right. Uh, let's see. Party. It's uh, a party at Ian's Halloween party with Sylvia. So perfect. Uh, who do you, uh, who put you in the corner? No one puts Ian in the corner. And this is actually a really good setup. Like I'm actually kind of pleased with how this turned out. So. Uh, I'm happy with it and it's 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 pretty photogenic if you ask me like I'm very thankful that my friend does YouTube videos because otherwise I would be in big trouble. All right, let's talk about this. Oh Gigi Quilt says she doesn't have early voting unfortunately. All right, make sure to get out and vote on November 8th. Get I think it's November 8th. Check your check to make sure but get out and vote. All right, let's talk about Sylvia. This is Sylvia everyone. Sylvia meet everyone everyone meet Sylvia. <laughs> This is my 1948 Singer sewing machine. I inherited, inherited her from a family friend. Uh, this was actually her mother's. Her mother's name was Sylvia. And actually on the case, which I have on the floor over here, uh, in Sylvia's own handwriting, it has her name on the top of it. So I wanted to continue. All, all the featherweights have a name. Um, and I really felt very strongly that this one needed to be named Sylvia because that's the name on the case. I did take her in, so I received her back uh, months ago, uh, towards the beginning of the year. I took her in to get serviced at Boxcar Quilts. Uh, Chief Featherweight comes in uh, and takes care of the Featherweight machines. Uh, and so I did get her taken care of. She got a full spa day and she apparently works very well from what Chief Featherweight says. Tonight we're going to put that to the test and I'm going to learn how to use her because I've never used a featherweight before. This is going to be the first time that uh, I'm using her. So I'm excited for this. She is a beauty. I love it. Cannot wait. Deborah already sent in her ballot. Good job. Good job. I applaud you. Um, I know she's, she's beautiful. The paint is very well done. I do have a kit to clean her. So like adding polish and taking away some of the um, older protective coating and all that kind of stuff. I haven't, I'm nervous to do it, to be 100% honest with you. I'm just nervous to do that. So I haven't done it yet, but uh, at some point I will. Uh, one thing that I did buy, I have the original pedal 
Um, let me see if I can grab it really quick. I have the original pedal. I know I can't do a close-up with it, but this is the original pedal for, sing, uh, for, for featherweights, and they're weird because they have one post that doesn't move, and then on this one, this is the actual button that you push. I did not like how this works because I'm used to the regular pedal, so I did buy a, uh, it kind of converts it into a regular pedal, and so basically what happens is there are four holes, which is where the pedal goes into. Let me just do that like so. And now it converts it into just like a regular pedal where you can do that. So I did want to mention that you can find them all over the internet. I bought mine from Etsy. It was a little pricey to be honest. Don't, <laughs> Dexter, don't, no. <laughs> you can't see it, but there is a black lab uh, just in front of my table here. And uh, he was smelling and probably getting ready to lick the pedals. So I wanted to make sure he didn't do that. So yeah, I have a Sylvia. Very nice. Tiffany voted the other day. Excellent. Very nice. All right, so that's the pedal I'm using. My cord is a little bit shorter going to the pedal because um, he, Chief Featherweight actually had to cut and rewire my pedal. Um, and so uh, it's a little bit shorter. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it that way or if I'm going to, you can actually buy replacement pedals that are regular pedals like we're used to today. Uh, I may go with that, I will have to see. I had to shift the machine over so that there was enough cord to make it to the floor. So Terry says, I have a few vintage mach machines with those pedals and I like them. That's very interesting because I, I just didn't, I didn't like the way it worked. So I had to convert it into the regular one, but it's, it's interesting to see the progression of like how pedals have changed. Like, yeah, anyways, I'm getting way too far and deep into that. Today, I'm gonna to be sewing a nine patch, super easy. I have nine fabrics, Halloween fabrics, what else would I have over here? But I have nine fabrics over here that are Halloween themed. I'm just gonna make a basic nine patch, nothing crazy, but I wanted to use Sylvia to do that because I've never sewn with her before. So that will be pretty fun. Uh, Janet says that I want a featherweight, but it's out of my price range that they get very expensive for sure. And I'm super lucky that this one was, was passed to me. Um, she knew that I was going to take good care of it. And so I wanted to make sure to do that. So anyways, I'm going to turn them on. I did get the light bulb changed out of it. They do come if they are original to the time period. Uh, they will have an incandescent bulb. I changed it out for the uh, LED bulb because it doesn't get as hot and it, to me, it's brighter. So I do have an LED bulb on here, which is super bright to be honest. And the first thing, oh, and something else that I did modify, there is, uh, I have a cross thread uh, spool. So I wanted to use, because normally they would sit upright on this and when you have the cross thread spools, they don't work great on that. So I did add a, um, a, a modification here that turns it so that it goes sideways, it goes horizontal. Um, and I can, it will hopefully be a little bit better to do it that way. I also added a quarter inch foot. So I took the original foot off and added a quarter inch foot so that way I can see where that quarter inch is. Where did you get your pedal? I got it off of Etsy. Um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. I will go back and um, look for the pedal seller on Etsy and I'll put that either in the description or the first comment down below. Probably not tonight, but as soon as I can, I'll put it down in the description below or the first comment. I can guarantee you you're gonna find a cheaper price though because Boxcar Quilts has them and they were cheaper there, but I liked the way that this one looked. Ooh, I probably spent too much, but I liked this one better, so I went with this one. Oh, look at that! So, Becca, just right there in the in the in the chat, pulled it up. Thank you, Becca. Appreciate that so much. By the way, you do have uh, you can use commands. Uh, there are commands available. You can do exclamation point help to find out what the commands are. Yes, Magic Eight Ball is enabled, which would be. I think kind of appropriate tonight, yes, no, I don't know. Anyways, so I added a quarter inch of a, uh, a quarter inch foot onto uh, my um, 
my thing, <laughs> onto a quarter inch foot so that way I can know where that quarter inch is. Sorry, I was thinking of Amy's comment here. What does the silver plate, silver face plate look like? It's just lines. There's no super big decoration to this one. It's just lines, uh, nothing too fancy, but um, I love it. I love her. Even though I've never used her before, I love her. First thing we need to do is wind a bobbin. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've already put my bobbin on here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the knob so that way it disengages the needle so that way it's not going crazy. And I, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on threading her through, I'm gonna thread the thread through here. And I've already engaged the bobbin onto the wheel. All right, cross your fingers, everybody. Here we go. She's going. Okay, I'm probably not gonna need all that tonight, but like that was, that was fun. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. I really am. Um, all right, so I'm gonna cut my thread. I'm gonna pull that off. Here's my bobbin. Pull that away, re-engage the wheel so that way the needle turns or goes up and down. <laughs> Somebody use the eight ball, I see. Very nice. Um, Yeah, there are definitely some more affordable options out there. I see Becca commenting on that. Yeah, there definitely are. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to thread the rest of the machine. I hope I'm doing this right. Probably should have looked at my directions before I got started tonight. I looked at them a little while ago. This feels right so far, I hope. And I'm going to go down through here. Pretty sure. The good news is, just off to the side of me, I, oops. Oh, I got caught up. Um, just to the off of, just off the camera here, I have the instructions if I need to refer to them. But this feels very right so far. This is definitely not as intuitive as my machine at home. Does it go through there? I think it probably does. Let's see. That feels very right. Not sure if it is, but we're gonna find out together, right? Sorry, I'm getting distracted by the comments. There it goes through the eye. I just made it through the eye of the needle. All right, so there, that feels pretty good. We will see. All right, I'm gonna take my bobbin. I'm gonna drop it into the case. I'm going to put it behind the tension. So they say, so one thing I did learn is when you thread the bobbin correctly, it should stay up on its own. Whoop. And I just totally took it out <laughs> because actually what happened was the bobbin fell completely out of it. So I'm going to redo that. Okay. There it is. It's holding on its own. I'm going to pop this back into where it belongs. And that's not the right way. I apologize that I'm like going quiet. I just, uh, I'm trying to, oops, just trying to figure it out. I'm so used to 
my machine at home, and this is very, very different. Okay, that's back with the way it should be. How does this fit in here? There. Ha! Okay, it just clicked in, so that's a good thing. Alright, so now... Should be able to go down with this needle, and I should be able to grab my bobbin thread. Yep. Oh, I did it! I did it! I did it! Oh, I'm so excited. So now I'm going to pull the bobbin thread. All right. Success. I'm calling this good so far. So now I have my two tails, which I have super long tails at the moment. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I have a test piece of fabric. This is what they used in the shop to test it out and make sure that it works well. I think I have my settings correct. I tried to look up online and figure out what the correct stitch length is, because obviously we want like a 2.5 uh, stitch, but the machines don't actually display that size there's, you know, 6 and 7, 8, 10, 12, 15, 30. So I'm not exactly sure what stitch length corresponds to the 2.5 because that's not how this was written. It, it was crazy online. Mom had a, uh, Barbara says, Mom had a featherweight. She gave it to my sister. My sister traded it for a Montgomery Ward sewing machine. I remember Montgomery Wards. Oh, if she had given it to me, I would still have it today. I'm so sorry to hear that. That is uh, not fun. Sewing with Loang says, oops, I signed in under the wrong account. Whoops. All right, so this is gonna be, watch out, watch your paw. He literally had his paw under the pedal. All right, so, so we're gonna see how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the presser foot. I'm gonna put the needle down into it. I'm gonna hold my tails because I've learned through many videos that you have to hold your tails. Cross your fingers, everyone. Here we go. Okay, I think I did it. <laughs> I think, I think that was it. Oh, it's black on black, so you're not gonna be able to see this. I'm sorry. I should have brought some um, like white material. That looks good. No, it doesn't. <laughs> nope, it doesn't. Just kidding. So my bobbin thread is looping a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn my tension up a little bit. I'm glad I tested this out because I have, what's happening is down on the bottom side, I'm seeing big loops on the bottom part of my seam. So top thread is the problem. Okay. So it's my top thread that's having a problem. I think it might be too loose. I'm going to try this again because I want to make sure that I'm getting it right before I start sewing the nine patch. So I'm going to try this again. Top tension, everyone's saying top tension. So we're going to try this again. I changed the top. Oh, I forgot to hold the tails, my bad. And that didn't work. <laughs> my thread came out. I didn't hold the tail, so it popped out of everywhere. Ooh, this is gonna be a fun evening, everyone! Gonna be a fun evening. <laughs> I thought, oh sure, surely I can get this super quickly, right? I also wanted like a genuine reaction doing this. I'm so used to not holding my tails because our modern machines don't need us to do that. 
I need to remember with this one I have to hold the tails. All right, that goes there, that goes there, right, yep, that goes there. I see that y'all are writing uh, chat messages. Unfortunately, I am, I'm really bad about um, looking at them, but also I'm trying to get this rethreaded, so. I see that y'all are writing stuff. I'll check here in just a second. Threading the needle. I'm used to my needle threader on my modern machine. Okay, there we go. All right, let's try this again. I'm gonna hold the tails this time. Hold the tails. <laughs> I don't know if y'all just heard him. All right, here we go. Let's try this again. That seemed a little better. Let me try it again. Rethread your machine and make sure it's in the uh, tension disc nice and tight. All right. It is in the tension discs very nicely. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna sew across. I'm gonna sew across the center of this piece. I'm going to hold my tails. Ooh, I think I got it. I think I might have gotten it. I think I got it, guys. Nope, didn't. No, it's still looping for some reason on the bottom. All right, I'm gonna, we're gonna re-thread. We're gonna re-thread. Fun little experiment, right? Okay, go through here. Through here. Oh, okay, that makes a difference. Okay, I don't think I had it, I don't think I had it right. I think I, I know, I wish there was another camera angle for y'all, oh, oh, I think that makes a lot more sense. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think this feels more right. I said that before though, so who knows? I don't think I had hooked it exactly where it needed to go. And if this doesn't work this time, I'm gonna bust out the instructions like I probably should have done from the beginning. Uh, and I'm gonna try it and read the directions really quickly to tell me, but I think, I think this might be it. I really think this might be it. Cause I think it's going through the right places now. All right, grab my tails. Whoops. <laughs> Sewing with Louine says, Ian, do we need to send over five-year-olds to show you? Probably. All right, let's see. Probably do, to be honest. All right, let's see here. No, it's still looping on the bottom. What am I 
I doing wrong? This is getting frustrating. All right, guys, if it is looping on the bottom, if I'm getting loops on the bottom, what do I need to be doing to correct that? Do I lower the tension or do I increase the tension? Lower the tension, increase the tension on the top. Let me know. Let me know what I need to do because the top looks great. The top thread looks perfect. The bottom thread or, or the bottom is where I'm seeing those loops coming out from. Put tensions at four, all right? Tension is at four. Increase top tension. Everyone's saying, I'm going to put it at four. We're going to see. Worst case scenario, I do it all again. And if you can pick up the bobbin from your hand, the bobbin is tight. Okay. Yep, still not right. Still not right. That's okay. I thought it was supposed to do this. I thought the, like, when I jiggle it, it slowly goes down. It really sounds like it's not threaded correctly. Okay. All right. Do, do, do. Okay. That goes back in there. This is like a DIY masterclass on what to do wrong. <laughs> do, do, do. Well, you may not see me. <laughs> Amy, you may not see me. So with Sylvia tonight, depending on how this goes, <laughs> we'll see. Let me grab the instruction manual because I do have the original instruction manual. Let me make sure that I'm, I'm going through correctly. Yes, that is correct. So it goes through there. Yep, I have my bobbin threaded correctly. Yep. Yep. Yep, that's all correct. Right? Right, Laura, get the manual out. Save your frustration. Okay. Okay, so that goes through there. Yep, uh-huh. Goes up to the top. Uh-huh. Goes through there. Uh-huh. Goes through here. Yep. I have it thread the right way. Through there. Okay, sorry about that everyone. <laughs> there were trick-or-treaters that apparently didn't know that the porch light is off. Alright, moving along. The needle, the needle may be the wrong way. Do, do, do. Okay. Sorry guys. That surprised me. Wasn't expecting trick-or-treaters because I especially turned off the porch light. Uh, but I don't think they quite got the message. All right, so. Well, now I'm not bringing up any bobbin thread. I would loosen the bobbin a little, then double check how it's threaded, then keep. Okay. Oh no, Pat, 
Polly says, your pup made my pup bark. That's funny. Right? <laughs> Melissa says, I thought Dexter was having strong opinions about something. I was too, because the doorbell, there's no indoor, uh, there's no doorbell. It doesn't ring on the inside. It is a ring doorbell, so it goes to their phone. And um, I didn't, I wasn't expecting anybody. So when it started, when he started barking, I was like, what is that? Okay. Amy said, tension 5.5 since you're working with Orifil. Got it. 5.5, thank you. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. There it is. All right, so I've got my bobbin thread. We're going to get this. We're going to get this, guys. I have a good feeling about it. Just a little time. I've used Orifil on my featherweight and it works fine. Yeah. Did you change the needle? This is a new needle. Oh, I took it to be fixed and the repair lady hugged me as I was crying. Oh, she charged you nothing? Oh, that's so sweet. Dexter. Dexter, here. Dexter, lay down. Lay down. Thank you. Good boy. All right. Let's try this again. Holding the tails. Let's try this again. It was I either either I just needed to rethread everything or turning it up to 5.5 worked. Uh, either way, no more loops. It's beautiful. I wish I could show this on a close-up camera, but I don't have one. So uh, it gave a good stitch. It looks great. Woo! <sighs> Everything's okay. Everything is a okay. I got worried there for a bit, guys, but this looks good. I'm very happy with this. Yes, that looks perfect. All right, there's our answer. <laughs> I don't know if it was rethreading or changing the tension to 5.5. Either way, it worked. All right, so shall we move on? We shall. Um, let's see. Should we put a spell on the machine so it continues to work properly? Yes. Um, all right. The Crafty Panda is passing through. She says, hopefully you figured it out. I did! Um, so now we're going to start it on our nine patch. Very simple. I just wanted something simple, easy, quick tonight. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sorry. I'm so excited. I'm so excited by this. I'm so sorry that y'all are seeing me geek out, but I'm in love. I'm in love with this so much. Okay, so I have squares. I don't even remember. I think these are 2.5 inch squares that I have. And I am uh, just turning them into a nine patch. I love that I have the uh, quarter inch guide on here. I have a quarter inch guide foot makes this is going to make it so much easier to do. So I'm going to hold my tails. Take a picture of the set. Oh, that's a good. Well, my phone's over there, but I'll take a picture of the settings once I get off live tonight. Um, let's see. <laughs> so Terry says, I love it. Um, don't be afraid to mess with tension to what it seems like an extreme way. It might require some adjustment even as you sew. That's good to know. I think most of us are here explicitly for the geek out. Well, you got one. <laughs> you got one. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and sew my first seam across here. Ooh, I've got to get used to this pedal. All right, so that was the first one. I'm also going to have to get used to my current machine. My modern machine will stop with the needle in the up position. So I'm going to have to get used to not having that happen and having to 
uh, move the needle back up because it does you know on our modern machines we can choose whether it starts where it, where it stops at either up or down um, and I like my needle down whenever it stops uh, all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and put the next one on and I'm gonna finger press these because I don't have my iron with me I didn't even bring my little iron with me um, I decided to just go rogue and just finger press tonight so um, that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hold my tails again I'm gonna gently start sewing Ooh, this thing can go so fast if you're not ready for it my I mean my machine at home can go fast but like I was not prepared for how fast this goes uh, yo Patty G says are you excited that you will do the cart Car Carlton dance from Fresh Pins? Um, I'm a white boy I don't dance <laughs> Uh, but I can like, ee, that's, that's about all you're going to get tonight. I, that was so exciting. I, I geeked out when I saw how well that, okay. So there's our first row. Not bad. Uh, I'm going to press these. I'm going to finger press these outwards and on my next row, remind me on the next row to press inwards. So that way our seams will nest whenever we get there. It was just so exciting. Not even the two-step? Mm -mm. Not even a two-step. Right? That's what he does. He's like... <laughs> Alright, so I've got my top row done. Let's move on to the next. I'm so excited. I put too much um, best press on this one. It's like paper. It literally feels like paper right now. I'm gonna line those up, take them over, hold the tails, and gently start sewing. This, ooh, I'm gonna have to learn how to navigate this. It's fine, this is a, all a learning process, right? All learning process. <laughs> so Becca says, if it feels like, <laughs> Becca says, no, Ian, if it feels like paper, you use just enough best press. I know, no costume tonight. I'm so sorry. I am um, house sitting. So I, I do have my Sanderson sisters on, uh, but I don't have my, I don't have a costume tonight. Sorry. Keep telling yourself that. I cannot do a Cotton Eye Joe. No, I, I, no. I'll tell you what though, I used to work at a theme park and I would be, and one of the things that I was required to do was a dance party with the characters and I would have to dance um, at these dance parties and I like, no, no one, no one needs to see that. <laughs> no one needs to see that. It was not pretty. All right, so here we go. The, the feed dogs on this feel stronger than my modern machine, which is very interesting to me. Like it is taking that fabric in uh, and running with it. So it's kind of crazy. It's very interesting. I know that we're not going to get like a great feel for it tonight. This is just kind of a test to see, but like there is row two. We're going to press this inwards. We're going to press it in towards our center block. So that way, whenever we go to put all these together, they nest. Wait until you bind a quilt on your feather. Bind a quilt on a featherweight? Oh my gosh. I don't know that I could do that. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. She's a boss, Ian. Sylvia's a boss. She is. She is a boss. Debt Free Quilter says, Ian, you can't stomp your feet and clap your hands in a rhythm. I'm going to be honest with you. No. <laughs> I am really poorly co coordinated 
Um, yeah. It's really kind of bad. I could do YMCA. YMCA. Alright. Moving on to the last three. We're gonna go ahead and put these three together. This is fun. I love this. I, I really love this. I'm gonna have to figure out how, how, like, what I want to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. A lot more sewing, not a lot more, but, like, I'm definitely going to be using her for more sewing projects. Um, she's been sitting on a shelf for a while, and it's time to bring her out and start using. I really wanted to record myself using her for the first time, so I didn't want to touch her until I was ready to record. This is interesting. I'm noticing that the fabric wants to kind of turn as I'm sewing. So, you know, this is all, every machine, no matter if it's modern or a vintage machine, they all kind of have their quirks to them. So I'm, I'm learning her quirks and learning how to to use her um, to get the result that I'm looking for. So I think part of it is the feed dogs. There's more feed dogs on the left side and there's smaller, not smaller, but there's less on the right. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking because there's more on the left that it, that that's what it's doing. Amy says, don't feel bad in college uh, aerobics class. They made me stand in the back because of my own, <laughs> because my uncoordination was distracting for others. I feel that so much. I feel that so much. Check something really quick. All right. There we go. I think it works better with the original foot, to be honest. I'm gonna try, uh, so I'm gonna probably put it back on at some point because I, this is the first experience with her. Just kinda wanna see what it feels like. I probably will put the original foot back on and see what that feels like. It's an, oop, I almost didn't grab the tails. Um, it's a learning experience, right? Like I'm learning on what, what works and what doesn't. So at some point I probably will put the original foot back on and just kind of see what that's like. I think when I'm, since I know what I'm kind of experiencing, I think that's going to help me compensate, right? Like, does that make sense? I think as I'm doing this, it's going to make more and more sense the more I sew. This is just like a super, quick little example. I learned to dance at the ski rink. That's cool. When I use the quarter inch foot on my vintage, she pulls to the side. Good to know, uh, Terry. I will have to see what the original foot feels like. Using leaders and enders, you do not have to hold the thread. Yeah, I should probably do that. <laughs> Hey, just got on for a little while. I use the featherweight all the time. Whenever a problem with my sh machine, it's usually threaded wrong and I change the needle. I use orth or fill thread all the time. Good to know. All right, so I'm gonna press this, finger press these outwards. And I haven't shown you this yet, I'm sorry. I haven't held this up for the camera to see, but there we go. So there's row three. All right, so now it's time to put all three rows together. And actually we're on time because we got 15 minutes till eight o'clock. We're doing good. All right, so now I'm gonna take my top row and I'm gonna nest it in to the middle row. So let me get this, those are nested. I'm gonna hold my tails. I'm also, I was also holding my tails with my right hand. I may switch to doing it with the left, we'll see. I don't know. 
This is a learning experience. Learning experience for me, learning experience for y'all, right? Hopefully y'all are getting something out of this as well. Okay, we made it through that scene, that worked out okay. This isn't gonna line up property properly, I can already tell, but that's okay. Like again, this is totally an experimental block. It's totally fine. Yeah, that's it's gonna be a little crooked. It's gonna be a little crooked, it's fine, it's fine. Katie says, no dance class tonight, and I get to stay for the entire live. Excellent. Yeah, it's a little wonky. It's a little wonky. It's no big deal. Again, I'm finger pressing. Did anyone see Team Come's video on the disappearing night patch? I haven't. So this is what we have so far. One more row to go. Debt Freak Quilter says, missed it. Uh-oh, what did I miss? Oh, part of the problem is I did it the wrong way. Whoops. It's fine. It's fine. One of my scenes decided that it wanted to go the wrong way, but that's okay. One of my, yeah, one of my scenes decided it didn't want to follow the nesting. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. All right. Oop, hold the tails. I keep forgetting to do that. I'm so used to the modern machines where you don't have to hold the tails. I know leaders and enders, I would not have to do that. With this machine, I may have to start doing that. Terry says, if you saw Saturday Night Fever, that was the club I often went to. Oh, that's cool. My friends were in the movie. That's pretty sweet. to the end. Wow! Oh my gosh, you just put a little pressure on the pedal and it goes hog wild. All right, that was the last one. Let's see what this all looks like. Yes, I did vote. I did vote today. Lauren, So let's see which way. I don't know which way I want to press this. I'll press it this way. I'm just finger pressing. I'm just pressing it down. Uh, I've been to the club where they filmed Rhinestone Cowboy. That's pretty cool. So, uh, I used to hang out at the Rose Room where Sorted Lives, the wedding was filmed. Was that here? Because there's a Rose Room here in Dallas-Fort Worth, and I'm wondering if it's the same one. I'm wondering if it's the same ro Rose Room or not. Sorry, I'm just checking... Just checking. I got some text messages that I didn't realize that I got. All right. Nine patch is complete. What do you think, guys? If not perfect, definitely some work to be done. But this is my nine patch. What do you think? 
Yes, the one at S4. I know exactly. Yep, I've been to the Rose Room several times. So Terry says, cool, doesn't it stitch beautifully? Yeah, it does. It really, it really does. I'm very excited to continue experimenting and learning more about her and how she works. Um, this was, I'm so glad I decided to do this today because she sewed beautifully once I figured it out. It took a moment. But once I figured it out, I think it works great. I can't wait to uh, do some more. Um, I think it would be really cool to do some like quilted postcards, at least the creating the tops using her. I think this would be a great use for her, um, her skills. I uh, can't actually do the sides because you would need to do a zigzag stitch and featherweights can only do straight stitch. But I'm going to be very interested what it's like to put the regular foot back on, try that for a little bit, see what I think, and kind of go from there. If I do that, I will have to figure out my quarter inch guide, like find a quarter inch guide or, or put a piece of tape or some way to indicate to me that that's a quarter inch. Um, that's why I got the quarter inch foot is because I needed some way to tell where to, where to put everything. You did a great job. Pat yourself on the back. I think I will. <laughs> Yeah, the, the intersections are not great on here. Um, part of that is because apparently I somehow finger pressed it the wrong way. And because they're finger pressed, um, I don't think I got the like crisp uh, seam allowance and, and fold like I should have. But I think if I use some, uh, if I was to do this again with an actual iron and do all that, I think it would work out a lot better. Oh, I forgot. Welcome everybody to Maker Monday. I don't know if I said that yet or not, but there you go. But there you go. Little nine patch. Oops, I forgot to cut off this thread. Uh, let's see. That was the old uh, plantation when I came out in 1983. Yeah, because it was, um, before it was S4, it was the, the village? Was it the village or the station? Station or village? I can't remember. Anyways, you could buy a zigzag. What? Interesting. Auntie L says you can buy a zigzag attach attachment for the featherweight. I didn't know that. The featherweight shop has great supplies. Yes, that's where I bought the um, quarter inch foot. That's where I bought their polish from. Um, yes, they do have some great supplies and I plan on asking Santa for more. Uh, you can use a walking foot as well. It looks uh, funny on that baby machine, but it works well. That's very interesting. We're going to have to check that out. I have two zigzag feet. I'm going to have to check that out now because I did not realize that you could do a zigzag on a featherweight. I thought it was only straight stitch machine. That's all I thought it was. That's pretty cool. Good enough for, for most, good enough most of us. Absolutely. I think it's, I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. I can't wait to get back home and actually do some steam on it and like actually press it, but I think it's I think it's a pretty pretty good little block. It's got all the Halloween colors and shapes and everything in it. I think it's pretty nice. The attachment moves the fabric, not the needle. Oh, interesting. So it actually moves. Oh, huh. Frame that block. Yeah, I should. I should frame this. I, th I don't know what I'm going to do with this one, actually. Um, but I think I'm going to do something, like, decorative with it. I, I'm not... I thought about a mug rug, but I don't know. I think I want to do something, something else with it. I'm not sure what, though. Not sure what. Let me see if I can bring this up a little bit closer. I know De Dexter stood up. He was like, oh, you're doing something. So there it is. I don't know if you could see it like super far back, but there we go. That's what it looks like. Dexter's down there like, oh, I want to see it. I want to see it. Oh, pfft. <laughs> <laughs> Dexter made an appearance. Oh, that was funny. Oh, you're so, you're so silly. You're so silly. Yes. Yes. He's a good boy though. That was funny. I wasn't expecting him to do that. I'm kind of waiting for y'all's reaction. Uh, Terry says that she is, that's cool, and I'm eating, 
Everyone says hello. Um, says eating candy corn and I like your uh, fabric patch. Thank you. Buy a small frame and frame it. I, that probably is going to happen. I'll probably frame it or do something with it. Thanks for sharing your time and Dexter with us. Absolutely. Could be part of a dust cover for her. Absolutely. Although I'm planning, I have her case. She has the original case with her. Um, and so I'm planning on uh, just using the, the case um, to keep her in because um, I like, I, it could be a dust cover for the case though. Could be what it is. Um, let's see. Auntie, I have not had one trick-or-treater tonight. I apparently had some just a moment ago, but I, they apparently didn't understand that the light on the porch being off means you don't answer the door, but whatever, it's fine. My featherweights, Veronica and Betty wish her well. Thank you so much. Dexter wants to see your block, that's right. Um, so I wanna show you this. I wanna show everybody, this is uh, Sylvia's original handwriting. And this is why she's named Sylvia. It's Cause as you can see here, she has written her name in gold on the top. So this is her case. This is where she lives. Uh, and uh, yeah, wow, I'm just, I'm so excited. By the way, this is the model 221, the featherweight model Singer 221. Um, and I looked up her, cause she has of course, a serial number on her. And when I looked her up, she was 1948, which makes me feel very, hi. Dexter's face is in my lap right now, and he's like, pet me, pet me, pet me. Ugh. Oh, I answered your question without even knowing it. 1948. She's a 1948. It's a little early for trick-or-treaters here. It's about to be 8 o'clock here. Well, I'm ending right on time. What do you know? Trick-or-treaters have to get past the front desk to get to my apartment. It would take them all night as we have over 180 units. Goodness. Mine is named Birdie. My granddaughter's sparrow named her. Very nice. Terry says that hers is a 1953. And Nancy has one that's a 1948, which is her birth year. Very nice. Yeah. I don't know if you can see Dexter poking up right here, but... He's saying hello to everyone again. All right, guys, that's going to do it for tonight's live. Quick, simple, easy. Just wanted something a little fun and a little different as uh, obviously I'm not home. But I figured I would jump on here and do a quick little uh, Maker Monday with everybody making our Halloween 9 patch using Sylvia for the first time. Lots more to learn from her. Lots more to experiment with. I'm going to put that uh, original foot on and see if I like it better at some point. But uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. That was worth rewinding for Dexter. I know I was not expecting him to jump up like that, but that was pretty funny. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I named it for my sister, Sally, who was born in 1953. Very nice. I actually have to like come back behind the camera. So hope everybody has a great evening. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I hope everybody has a very safe, and of course, happy Halloween. I can't wait to see y'all back here next time. I already have my live, uh, one live set up. We may be doing more. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, so make sure to subscribe and check it out. Check everything out on my channel as I put it up there. Hit that subscribe button so that way you get a notification every time I go live or post a new video. Hope everybody has a great night. And remember guys, normals just is sitting on the dryer. Okay, I have to come, I actually have to get up and move around the camera. Bye everyone. <laughs> Hope you have a good night. Dexter says goodbye.